Okay, so I've been looking at layers here, and one of the things I've been doing is adding in different layers such as text, block captions. I've got a bit of freehand in here as well, but I'm just going to get rid of that because it to me it just looks like it's clustering out up at the moment. And I also copied and pasted the Eiffel Tower here from one photo into here, and again I can switch that all on and off. But there is another type of layer as well, which is called the adjustment layer. And the great thing about it is I can make changes to exposure, brightness, color, and I can do that without interfering with the actual original picture. So if I wanted to make it a little bit warmer, I could do that. And people sometimes like their photos, so it'll be a little bit warmer or cool. So you add a little bit of red or a bit of blue to do that. And I can do that in two ways actually. I can go to the layer menu at the top here and you'll see that there is an option, the new adjustment layer. And from that you can choose the brightness and contrast, levels, exposure. There's a whole load of them here. Let's do something really simple such as the brightness and contrast. And if I choose that, I've now got a brightness and contrast one. That's the name it's gonna give it. I'm absolutely fine with that. I'm gonna keep that and then I'm going to click on OK. You'll see it's put it at the top because I had the Paris in London selected. So what it does is it alters everything below that. So this is in order. This is at the bottom, that's at the top, if you imagine them all stacked on top of each other. So let me just change the brightness. And if I drag it right up, I'm being a bit dramatic here, although for the snow it kind of gives this kind of nice sort of blown out kind of effect. I quite like it, but hey, we all have our opinions. So I've adjusted that and you'll have noticed it did it for the text and it did it for the Eiffel Tower as well. Watch what happens when I change the position of where this is in the list. So if I move that down to underneath the Eiffel Tower, it's now only kept the brightness of the background. The Eiffel Tower has now gone back to what it was. If I move it to above the Eiffel Tower, you can see it's changed it there as well. So you can do different things to different layers. So that's quite useful. The thing I like about this is I might think, okay, I like that brightness one. Let me just turn that off. Um, let me try another one. Let me just see what it would look like if it wasn't so bright. And perhaps you want to show somebody. And let's just add in that new layer. And actually maybe, let's go the other way. Let's make it darker and see what happens. So now you've got two here, and you can see it always puts it on the layer above the one you've got selected. So if you want to do two different versions and you just want to run it by somebody or just see how it looks yourself, well, all you've got to do is switch these eyes on and off. That's both on and off. So you don't have to go and ruin what you've already done. You can actually just keep trying different things to see how it looks. I'm quite keen as well on changing this a little bit so that I can see, I'm just going to turn that brightness off there so I've got the really bright one. I want to see what happens if maybe I add in a bit of vibrance here. So this is going to affect everything because I've got the top layer selected. I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, and this time I'm going to choose uh, vibrance. So I'm just going to choose that. Let's click on OK. I'm going to keep that name. And you can see I've now got this properties box that appears. So I can now increase the vibrance. Should punch up the colors quite a bit. You can see it's happening to the text in that block. You can also change the saturation as well. The vibrance is a little bit more subtle than the saturation. So taking the saturation right down actually makes it black and white. So I'm just going to set this back here. You can actually just type the number in. If I want it to be zero, press zero and enter. So I can now see by turning it on and off what it looks like. Okay, so a bit of a subtle change, but hopefully you can see that. Um, sometimes these things are hard to see when you're using a device such as watching this on your phone, but go and try it. It does actually work quite nicely. The vibrance is meant to punch up colors without affecting skin tones, which is quite useful whereas the saturation will affect all of that. So that's kind of where the difference is between the two of them. This property box popped up. I can just click on this double arrow here to hide it so I can see more of it. If I want to see 
those properties again I can just click here on my properties box and it takes me back to that and that's useful for all of these such as the brightness as well and it automatically popped up there okay so that's something I can do and I mentioned about adding a warming filter as well and again I'm at the top here I've got the vibrance on at the moment I just clicked on it I'm going to switch that off and I could go into layer and choose new adjustment layer and I could choose a photo filter and you can see there's a few different options here wait a second on the right hand side I've got this block here that's got some of exactly the same this says adjustments you've got libraries adjustment styles it was here on this one by default when I switched it on so you can see you've got the brightness and contrast that would add a layer you've got levels curves exposure all these things are quite useful to change but you'll see that there's one here called photo filter when you take a photograph you can put filters on to in front of the lens or sometimes depending on the type of lens actually behind the lens and you can then put on a filter to make everything a bit warm but you can now do this easily in Photoshop so what I'm going to do is click on that photo filter and bang at the top it's popped in another layer and I told you about the warming filter there there it is 85 that's the number that it's given it's just a standard filter so if you ever wanted the same filter to go over the front of your lens you would ask for this filter number 85 the warming filter you can change it you've got different types you've also got a cooling one and if I do that you can see it as a kind of blue kind of effect here to kind of cool the picture down and you can change the density of the filter and actually for something like this where it's cold you might want to add that cooling filter in as well and you can see there's a whole load you can choose sepia here as well and it's affecting the whole photo because it's at the top here if you didn't want to as I said you can just move it around you can switch them on and off so you can see how the combination of any of these look so that is how you can add in adjustment layers into Photoshop.